what we're doing now with, you know, taking his show and taking fabulous stylists that we're gonna find that diamond, you know, that diamond that's in the rough and turn that, you know, gem, person into a gem. There's only one man that can do that, and that's, you know, Peter Coppola. Peter Coppola is a man that is a trailblazer. He's a visionary. He sets the course of nature for our industry. Peter Coppola is like a big idol, and I'm so like I'm so excited to be here to actually be trying out for this competition. He's like the very best, even all the way all the way from Minnesota. If you know hair, it doesn't matter where you are. He's like he's the very best at it. And I know he wants somebody like me to work onto him because I'm gonna be his protege. I'm gonna be number one. The one thing about Peter is he's constantly reinventing himself. He changes with the times. Um, he's up to date with everything, fashion, style, you know, he keeps the girls up to date. He's also on Shop NBC, he's doing phenomenal. Peter has an amazing line out right now called Copachin Complex. What Peter is going to do with his show is to take that graduate from beauty school that goes out into the, into the world and we say, you know, this is where the rubber meets the road. And Peter will take and instill in these students, not just to be a stylist behind the chair, but how to be so well-rounded, to have a, a, a personality that'll blossom. There'll be one winner. And that winner not only gets a tremendous cash prize, but gets the opportunity to work in my new New York salon. And he'll have a chair there or she'll have a chair there, which is, is going to be really exciting for them because they'll be exposed to an, an environment and, and a clientele that they've never had before. There's no competition here. I'm clearly going to win this competition, so they need to watch out because I have more than enough skill to win the whole thing. Nobody better than me in there. Did you see? They were all dressed like all down, and I know I got what it takes. And there's no competition for me in there, so I don't know what they're thinking. Peter Coppola just needs to like stop this and just take me. Um, most of the people in this competition are, I would say, semi-okay. Nothing compared to me. Some of the girls I might have a little bit of competition with, but for the most part, I think I will win this and I will be the best out of everybody in this competition. We have seen them do some hair so far today, and the competition looks fierce.
feel pretty good about the audition. I mean, I think I'm, I'm the best for this, you know? I should be here, and I feel that I, I definitely deserve this. I'm really nervous with this whole competition. I mean, like, after looking at a couple of other stylists, you know, they're actually, they got something and they're bringing something to the table. I young students they come out of school and unfortunately they really think that they're ready to take on the world and they're really not I mean I'm doing it now 40 years and I've seen many many of them come and go you know and one of the things I, I try to explain to them is you know even good haircut is you, you don't lose a client because you gave a bad haircut you lose a client because you have a bad attitude you're you're doing a little more than that okay and I don't want you to do that okay okay we had a long conversation not too long ago Okay? Yes. And that's what it's all about. It's about being professional. Okay. I actually hated the guy. I hated him. He talked to me like I was some Jersey Shore kid from Jersey. Okay, now do it. Roll it. Now hit it and then do it. Pull it down and then give a wrist action. Good girl. Keep doing it. Pull it. Nope. What would happen if I didn't make the cut? Obviously I would be devastated, but that's not gonna happen because I am gonna make it. I'm gonna work with Peter and nobody else here. They have no chance. That gum chomping girl like, did not deserve to be here at all. I feel like I have such a good chance of winning. Um, I've been looking for something like this to showcase my talent and it's, it's very exciting. I, I really think I can win this. Don't get me wrong, like Maria's a really nice person. Like she's really sweet and stuff, but I don't, I don't really know why she's here. <laughs> Her style's not that great. She's kind of bland, really boring, really. And the challenges that Peter will put these students through, you know, the contestants, will be just amazing. Hi. You have great hair. I'm John Mark, um, and I am a hairstylist. And I would love to do like a cut and color on you, um, and I'll do it free of charge. I just think you have great hair. When Peter sent us out to go find a client on the street, I felt it was just embarrassing. I felt like I was a scavenge. Like I need to go find someone so I can make money. I mean, I just started. I'm I'm a little fresh at it, but I I think we can do great things, and I'm very talented. I'd love to work with you. Well, you know, I don't like paying 80 bucks for a haircut, so. No, I mean, it's, you know what? it's totally free. I just would love to do your hair. Yeah, no, that's what I'm saying. I 80 bucks for a haircut, free haircut, you know, all right, uh, whatever, I'm game. Cool, can you come now, or? Um, I actually have to run a really quick errand, but if you just tell me where to go, I, I promise, I promise I will, I will come. Yeah, it's the salon right over here. Just make sure you ask for John Mark, okay? Okay, awesome, awesome. all right, cool. Well, well I, I guess I'll see you then. Yeah, thanks, crazy, I'll see you later. Cool, yeah. I've come a long way. I've come all the way from Minnesota, so I'm not coming home. Like, I refuse. I, I need a seat in that salon, and I'm going to get a seat in that salon. We're working with the uh, contestants, and the students are, you know, they're tired. They've been pushed to the max, you know. They're working from, I say, eight to faint. And, you know, I see a student and I have to correct her. Stays in the hair, Esther. Okay. You know, did you not learn this? Did we not teach you this? Yeah, but I thought it was better this way. No, Esther, you need to follow the directions. I specifically showed her with the paddle brush after you do the treatment, how she has to do it. 
because she was using the round brush. Not necessary. She does not follow orders, Peter. I already told her to use the paddle brush and she's used the vent brush and she's using the round brush. Esther, go sit down. I'm using the paddle brush. Esther, I told you before, I told you that you are to do the smoothing line with the vent brush or the paddle brush, what not the rest. What is this? I just saw you put it down. Esther, don't give me an attitude. Go sit down. Esther, come and finish the job. For a second today, I wanted to kill Peter. Kill him. Don't ever embarrass me like that ever again in front of a student. You understand? What are you talking about? Don't ever do that again. Peter, I, Barbara, what are you talking about? Don't ever do that again. We'll discuss it later. You hear what I'm okay, saying to you? Okay, but listen, Peter. I don't want to talk. deliberately disobeyed I me. I don't want to talk about it. Peter. I don't want to talk about it now. Peter, listen to me. Peter, this is, this is absurd, Peter. Absurd. The guy's out of his mind. And then, you know, it's like water on a duck's back. You get over it. Because he is an amazing icon in this industry. Amazing. Peter and I have been an amazing team together. I know what he thinks, he knows what I think, and we work like clockwork. You know, guys like you sometimes think they know it all and they, they're ready to go on the floor and take on all the clients. You're not ready yet. At first, Peter, I thought, was just picking on me. But as the show went, he is really tough on everybody. You could be a good hair cutter. And I know many good hair cutters that have never made it in the industry because they just didn't have the, the foresight or the, the, the uh, discipline to make this work. You know, I call it the three D's of life. Dedication, you must have it. And then you must have the desire to move forward. And the most important thing is having the discipline. If you don't have discipline in this industry, you will never make it. And that's what we're trying to teach these young students, that they must have the discipline to work hard, put the hours in. That's so, so important. The most amazing thing is they will be taught and trained and cultivated and manicured by the best people in this industry. I buy maybe 10 magazines a week and I look at all the fashion that's coming up. You know, I look at the designers, I look at Armani, I look at, at Calvin Klein, I look at Ralph Lauren. I look at what they're doing and that inspires me to create new looks and new hairdos because fashion and hair do go together. It is a marriage and that's really, really very, very important, especially in, in, uh, in, in hair cutting. I'm inspired by the young people coming up in the industry. They really do inspire me. You know, when, when I do the beauty shows and I see these young people and I really try to make them understand what an incredible profession that they, they've, they've you know, gotten themselves into. And, and, and it truly is. I mean, it's being an artist, you know, when you think about what you do in cutting and designing hair and working with bone structure and cutting angles and it, it's, it's so rewarding. You have the opportunity when that client sits in your chair, you can sell her anything if you know how to do it. And it's all about selling yourself, preparing yourself, getting yourself ready for the, this, this competitive industry.